Welcome to Town Creek Indian Mound. This is a place full of mystery. Who were the people who lived here? How did they live? Why did they build the mound? What was its purpose? The structures that you see today at Town Creek have been reconstructed to give us a glimpse of what the lives of these people might have been like, to help us better understand the people who once lived here. The Temple Mound, the Burial Hut, and the Stockade are recreations of what was once an important ceremonial center for the native people who built it. But when Town Creek was discovered in modern times, none of the structures were still standing and the mound was just a small round hill. There are no written records from that time. How did we discover who these people were? How did we know what type of structures to build and where to build them? How did we find out how the structures were used? The mystery began to unfold many years ago in a cotton field owned by Lloyd Frucci. There was an unusual mound in the middle of the field located on a bluff overlooking Little River. Frucci's mound had attracted the interest of relic hunters for many years. Approached in 1936 by archeologists who wanted to study the site, Frucci donated an acre of land, including the mound, to the state of North Carolina. The location of the site itself gave these archeologists many important clues about why the people who built the mound might have chosen to build here. This high bluff over the river is a good place for our important spiritual ceremonies and a place that we can defend from our enemies. It is close to the river, so we have water nearby. And we can reach other places quickly by traveling on the river. There's a shoal that is good for fishing. And there are many plants and animals and birds here that we can use for food. And we plant our crops in the fertile soil nearby. In 1937, archaeologists began to study the Town Creek Mound site. They quickly realized that it was a major archaeological site, and the state eventually purchased 50 additional acres surrounding the mound. For more than 60 years, archaeologists have overseen the systematic excavation, recording, recovery, and evaluation of the material evidence that remained from the people who once lived on the site. Under the supervision of Dr. Joffrey Coe of the University of North Carolina and his associates, this in-depth and long-term study has revealed many clues that are helping us solve the mysteries of these people. Careful excavation of the mound led to the discovery that it had originally been an earth-covered lodge that collapsed. The mound was built on top of the collapsed lodge. Cross-sections of the mound clearly show where small loads of soil were piled up to create the mound. A temple was built on top of the mound. When this temple burned down, a second virtually identical temple was constructed in the same place. Mound building of this type is a very distinctive cultural trait. By comparing the mound built at Town Creek with those at other sites throughout the Southeast, the archaeologists could begin to answer questions about when these people lived here and what their culture was like. It was one of many Native American cultures that flourished and then disappeared over thousands of years before Europeans arrived in this area. Archaeologists found that the people who built the mound at Town Creek were influenced by a Native American culture now called South Appalachian Mississippian. We do not know what these people call themselves, but this local group was named after the P.D. River by archaeologists. The P.D. culture reached its zenith at Town Creek sometime between 1200 and 1400 A.D. 
We are building the mound on the sacred site of the old lodge. First, we build a clay embankment that encloses the old lodge and is much larger. This will be the base of the mound. Everyone helps to fill the embankment by bringing basket loads of soil. Load by load, we build it up into a tall square mound with a flat top. There we will build our temple. In addition to the excavation of the mound, an important part of the study was the creation of a photo mosaic of the area surrounding the mound. This task was accomplished by carefully removing the top layer of soil, a small section at a time, and photographing the features that were uncovered, like burial graves, stone hearth, and rotted posts. Pieced together, the photos began to reveal clues about the placement, size, and shape of shelters. Samples of materials from hearths and rotted posts were studied. Through radiocarbon dating of charred remains, archaeologists could confirm the time period when the people of the PD culture lived here. They could see where new structures had been built on the same site as old ones and how the original stockade enclosed a much smaller area than later ones. People had lived here for many years and it seemed that their population had grown. Further study of the composition of the posts showed us what types of trees were used and the discovery of stone tools indicates how these people built their shelters. When we build a shelter, it takes the work of many people. Logs are cut with stone axes and adzes to make the post. Stick, straw, bark, and reeds must be gathered for the walls and the roof. Using stone hoes and sturdy sticks, we dig the holes where posts are placed in the ground. Saplings are woven between the post and covered with clay daubing. Reeds are bundled and attached to the roof. Together, we build the shelters we live in, the temples for our spiritual ceremonies, the burial huts for our dead, and the stockade fence to protect us. The entrances are built so that only one person can come through at a time. That way, we can see and identify who enters and make it difficult for our enemies to attack us in force. Another important clue about the culture and lives of the people is found in the pottery and pottery fragments or sherds discovered at Town Creek. Each Native American culture had distinct ways of making and decorating pottery. The people of the PD culture created many unique and beautiful pottery designs and shapes, which clearly indicated that they were influenced by the South Appalachian Mississippian culture. From the small sherds of pottery, archaeologists can also determine much about the methods and materials used. We make pottery for many uses. To make a pot, I first find the clay, clean it, and roll it into coils. Then I stack the coils and smooth the surface together. I can decorate my pot with a design using a wooden paddle with the pattern carved into it, or by wrapping the pot with the handmade fabric of plant fiber and pressing the fabric into the soft clay. I dry the pot in the sun first, then I fire the pot using hot coals. We make many things out of clay, small cups, cooking pots, bowls, effigies, beads, and large jars to store the grain. We will also make a large urn in which to bury a child who dies. Some of the most valuable clues about the everyday lives of the people of Town Creek come from the most humble of sources. Looking at the remnants of the plants and animals found in trash pits and fire pits at Town Creek, archaeologists can determine a great deal about the foods that the people of Town Creek ate, how they hunted and farmed, and how they cooked. 
Often, evidence is microscopic and is only discovered after careful analysis in a laboratory. Scientific clues are also compared with the first written information about Native Americans recorded by the early European explorers. Keeping their people fed was one of the primary occupations of the people of PD culture. Much of our time is spent hunting and fishing. We must first make tools we need out of the stone. Deer and turkey are the animals we hunt most. But we also eat rabbit, squirrel, and turtle. To catch fish, we make fish hooks out of bone or build a fish weir in the river. We gather hickory nuts and acorns for food and grow corn and squash. Our food is cooked over wood fires. Most of our food is boiled in pots as stew. We also bake breads on heated stones and roast animals over an open fire. We use the other parts of the animals we hunt for many purposes. The skins to make clothes and pouches, the bones for tools and jewelry, the entrails for bowstrings and thread, and turtle shells for cups or rattles. Archaeologists found pipes, game discs, and jewelry as they excavated the site. Personal items reveal a lot about the lives of the people of the PD culture. Only a few figures of humans and animals were found. These stone and clay effigies may represent how they saw themselves and the creatures around them. Pipes and game discs were also made of stone and clay. The jewelry from the PD period found at Town Creek included necklaces, bracelets, and anklets made of shell beads. Larger ornaments made of shell, stone, and copper were also discovered. Most of the jewelry was found in graves, with children being more adorned than the adults in some cases. I trace my family back to my ancestors through my mother. I belong to her clan, and my uncles and aunts all help to teach me about my role in the clan. Every day, I learn the things I will need to know and help my family do its work. My jewelry identifies me to my clan until I'm old enough to become a full member. Our pipes belong to our clans, and we treat them with special care. We offer tobacco as part of our prayers, and the smoke carries them to the Creator. The games we play in the plaza are very important displays of courage and help us learn the skills we need to hunt and defend the clans. The general layout of Town Creek shows that it was an important social, spiritual, and ceremonial center for the people of the PD culture. In addition to the temple on the mound, which would have been the site of religious ceremonies and meetings, there was a smaller temple building facing the mound and a plaza or public area in front of the mound. The plaza was used for games, dancing, and important ceremonies. A large game pole and temporary open shelters were discovered in the plaza. Few artifacts were found in the plaza because it was swept clean for ceremonies. The most important of the yearly ceremonies was the busk. We hold a busk in the heat of summer when the new corn is ripe. It is a time to renew ourselves and the world around us. We sweep out the temple, huts, and the plaza to purify them for the ceremony. Old fires are put out and new ones kindled. We fast and purge ourselves by drinking the black drink. We hold rites to celebrate the renewal. We are reminded of our duties to the clans in the coming year. We reconcile with the people who have angered us and forgive those who have done wrong. We start the new year without the burdens of the old year's failures.
As a ceremonial center, Town Creek was the site of many burials. People of all cultures place great importance on how and where they bury their dead. And archaeologists learn a great deal about the culture of an earlier people by studying burial sites. Some of the burials were respectfully excavated and preserved for further study. Biological analysis of these remains can tell us much about how the people of Pedi culture died and, more importantly, how they lived. The majority of the burials were left in place and covered again with earth. We bury our dead carefully and with reverence. We place their clan markers with them. We wrap them in woven mats or skins and place them into the earth and place over them covers made of sticks and straw. Then we bury them with the earth. When a baby or small child dies, we take extra care and make a pottery burial urn for the baby's burial. The baby will also be buried with ornaments of the clan. We have learned much about the people who lived here, but there is much that remains a mystery. Was the arrival of the PD culture the result of new beliefs being spread throughout the Southeast? Or was it brought by people who came here from another place? And after 200 years of living and prospering here, what caused this culture to disappear? There is much we can still learn from Town Creek Indian Mound. It continues to be an important site for archaeologists to study. It is a sacred place that holds the mortal remains of the people of the Pedi culture. And to the many Native Americans who live in North Carolina today, it provides an important opportunity to celebrate and share their unique cultural heritage. It is a place where all of us can be connected with the people of the past. As you walk up to the stockade and through the north gate, imagine that you're walking in the footsteps of the people of Town Creek. See what mysteries will be revealed to you.